Welcome to everyone to our live kickoff meeting for EVO, uh, the Electronic Village Online, or I call it EVO, others call it EVO, so whichever way you call it, it's the same thing. And I want to extend a very uh, happy good morning to everyone in the U.S. and Central and South America, and good afternoon to fellow English teachers in Europe, Africa, and the Middle East. And good evening to all our colleagues in Asia. And I don't know if we have anybody in Australia or New Zealand, but um, it would be great to know if we, if we did. So we have <laughs> over 100 people in this uh, kickoff meeting. We're close to 100, so that's great. And uh, I'm Christine Bauer Ramazani. I'm the co-founder of EVO, also a longtime coordinator of EVO and the current lead coordinator. And I'm very happy to be here with all of you. I hope you have enrolled in uh, one or two of our courses. And if not yet, you can listen to the presentations today and then enroll. Uh, register and enroll today. Um, so it's been a whole year of preparing these sessions, our EVO sessions, and we've read many proposals, we've trained moderators, so finally the day is here that we're starting our five-week sessions. And you may know EVO was founded in 2000, as a special project of the call interest section of TESOL. <clears throat> and at that time, so 23, 24 years ago, distance learning or online learning was just beginning. And of course, you now know it's become very, very important in teaching and in English teaching in particular. We have had 50 5,000 uh, participants since then. So um, we're very proud of that achievement and we enjoy adding more to that list every year. So here you see the EVO coordination team for 2024. <clears throat> Unfortunately, <laughs> excuse me, our head lead coordinator, Sanya, was not able to Join us today. She extends her apologies. Her son is getting married uh, this weekend, so we wish the whole family all the best, and we're very happy for them. Then um, with me is Rose Bard, uh, who is our incoming uh, lead coordinator. Nelly is here our uh, former head lead coordinator. And uh, along with Nellie, I've got several helpers here. One of them being Doris, who's monitoring the chat. And Larissa, uh, who is also helping with things. Jane is monitoring the YouTube channel. So helpers are everywhere, which is wonderful. And I was glad that I was able to be here today. So we had an alternative set up just in case I wasn't going to be able to make it. So then there is Sue Annan from the Isle of Jersey. Jane is from Taiwan. Cheryl McCoy is in Kansas, United States. Larissa Olesova in Florida. Nagla Salem is in Toronto, Canada. Doris Molero is in Argentina, Sudarshana in India, Zainab, I'm not sure if Zainab is here today, she got married yesterday, uh, she's from Iran, but I haven't seen her today yet, so Grazia is joining us from Honduras, so welcome to the whole team, um, I have been very fortunate. I think we all have been fortunate to work with each other. It's been uh, a great year working together. Um, and we've got 15 uh, high quality sessions uh, lined up for you. So next slide, please. Here they are, 15 sessions. Um, 
we did a little bit more um, sorrow vetting this year. So um, we, we are sure that these are very high quality uh, sessions. Some of them are using Moodle and uh, uh, I think a little bit more than half are using Moodle and the other group is using the free version of Kansas free for teachers as a learning management system or an LMS. And the lead moderator or one of the co-moderators of each session is going to give an overview. So uh, moving on to the next one, of those 15, 13 of the sessions um, are recurring. That does not mean they're exactly the same thing as before. So in the session that I'm leading, delivering best practices in distance and blended courses, we did a lot of revamping. Um, and I'm sure the same thing happened in others uh, by adding more content, new content, and also new tools. And of course, you know, new tools come on the horizon all the time. We have two brand new sessions. Here they are, and we'll hear from those uh, next. Um, <clears throat> and they're... Uh, using some of the new technologies, AI, artificial intelligence, and H5Ps. Moving on. So the next, uh, this is the first slide where uh, the moderator, lead moderator is going to give an overview. And uh, we have a time to two minutes. So please stay within the time limits. If the audience, if there are questions in the audience, you can post them in the chat, uh, or you can wait and mark them down uh, on a piece of paper if you like for later. We do have a Q and A um, slide at the end, so at that time you can raise your questions. Uh, so the first one is Nellie. Uh, Nellie, are you ready to give your overview? I'm ready, as ready as I can okay. be. You can start Thank the you. timer. I'd love to hear the buzzer. So yeah, here it goes. All right. So um, this is a new session. Um, and we're really excited about it. Uh, Doris Malero is here. Doris, uh, you can give a shout out. And I don't know if uh, Emily's here. Uh, and there is mine. I haven't seen her yet. All right. So uh, Doris, you can stay with me as we go uh, through this. Um, ELT in um, AI, and we're going to be focusing on a few tools. You may know some of them, you may not, but I think that um, it's a great way to practice and, and that's what it's about. And you'll have a chance because uh, this session is a uh, hands-on session. Many have already started. I think we've got about 400. I think we're nearing 400, 300 and something. Uh, and uh, about 100 have already started the uh, pre-session and the introductions. Um, I think it's going to be a lot of fun, Doris. Uh, we can talk about each of the weeks. Uh, the first week is a general one where you're introduced to ChatGPT, Google Bard, and Claude. And then, Doris, you can talk about week two, if you like. Well, I'm all about images. So we will create in a lot of uh, activities that will benefit students and help them learn vocabulary, think critically through the creation of images. So that's where we're going to have fun. <laughs> and then I'll be talking about uh, tweet, uh, tweet, sorry, tweet. Uh, in week four, and uh, Emily is going to be talking about different uh, classroom activities, but we'll also be discussing classroom activities. Yes, so test-based action... test games, and so it's going to be fun. We're going to have a whole... Uh... And our time is up. Yep. <laughs> Okay. So you have to join us you. more, uh, and be and and I think the greatest thing is the fact that you'll be engaging with educators, um, ELT teachers from around the globe. And next, um, if we could have Andrea introduce yes, yes. her new session. Here. Okay. 
Well, first of all, uh, my name is Andrea. Uh, this is a, a great opportunity we have with Elizabeth, Nelly, and I myself to be uh, delivering a session, our first session at EVO. Uh, it's about creating basic H5P activities for our teaching context collaboratively. Uh, this is uh, basically a hands-on session where we will learn and share how to create lots, lots of basic H5P interactive activities. We will discuss the advantages of using this type of activities in our teaching contexts. We will learn a lot about Creative Commons copyright licenses and how to attribute material with these licenses. We will discuss and share how to find images, audio and videos online with these um, licenses. And of course, we will uh, create text-based uh, activities, uh, activities with images, with audio and videos. Uh, there will be tutorials and reading material, but participants will make their own video tutorials where they will share how they have created their basic H5P activities each week during the session. What are the takeaways of the of the session? Well, participants will work with teachers from all over the world, sharing ideas. They will learn collaboratively. There will be constant support from the moderators, from Elizabeth, from Nelly, from myself. And of course, from other participants, because we strongly believe in collaboration, in sharing, and in peer learning. And our goal is to have a lot, a lot of fun. I guess that's it. Uh, Elizabeth, I know you're here. Would you like to share some of your ideas with us? Nelly? I just want to say that it's an amazing session <laughs> and, I, and a lot you. of work, a lot of work has gone into it. A lot of work. And Elizabeth, uh, I mean, night, days and nights, I mean, you know, um, was spent on this. So it's really going to be amazing and a lot of fun, as you said. So join. Thank you. Okay. And here is um, our team and Larissa will be representing our team. Really? No, I, see you. Sorry. I am sorry. So... I am so sorry. No, <laughs> <Sue Anna. laughs> <It's okay. laughs> I have too many helpers. I'm so sorry, Sue. <laughs> no problem. The, You're the biggest helper team. for DBP. <laughs> DBP is going to be back for the third iteration of delivering best practices in distance and blended courses. And I'm Sue Annan, <laughs> one of the moderators. <laughs> Christine Bauer-Ramazani is our lead coordinator. And the other moderators on our wonderful international team are Rose Bard, Larissa Olesova, Nagla Salem and Christine Sabier. And Christine, I can just see down at the bottom. <laughs> now, our participants are going to design a course model in Canvas for their own teaching context. The module will have a tasks and assignments page, and that will include all the elements used in the module, such as the assignments, activities, discussion forums, the participants will experience interactive and collaborative tools. And this year we've incorporated TPAC learning activities in which the participants will discuss the interplay of technological, pedagogical and content knowledge, which gives you the TPAC. Participants are also going to learn about copyright guidelines and quality standards for online course design. And they'll be able to check their own course modules against the information. Best practices will be modeled and discussed, of course, and feedback will be given with a weekly rubric and feedback from the moderators. But this year, we're also offering a daily 
live office hour consultation. And that is something completely new, which we felt was needed for people who want face-to-face -face interaction. The goal of the course is to have the participants showcase their Canvas model at the end of week five with a recorded video or screencast. And at the end, you will receive a certificate. But starting with week two on January the 21st, all our weeks will begin with a live synchronous meeting on a Sunday. And they will end at midnight on the Saturday. But each week is a prerequisite for the following week. And that means you have to complete all of the items in the week's tasks before you can move on to the next week. And then you will receive your Thank certificate. You. Yeah, our time you. is up. Is yeah, done. Can you hear the too. bus? You don't hear the bus, right? Don't hear anything, but it's done. <laughs> okay, yeah. okay, okay. Thank you, Sue. So the bus is here. I can hear. Maybe uh, you uh, watch uh, the timing. Thank you. Um, maybe you need to add computer sound, Larissa. Oh, okay. System sound, I think that's what it's called. Okay. So next up is Nagla. No, Wata. What just, a minute, uh, just, just a minute. Just a minute. Just a minute. Okay. Uh, just a minute, Wata. Just a minute. Oh, we'll just yeah, tell uh, us when you're ready. Uh, stop share and then. Uh, Just a minute, I'm making you a uh, bigger share screen. How many people can be in the session? I, yeah, I don't. A uh, hundred. Oh, okay, here, share sound. Okay, so, yes, I'm okay. receiving messages from people that want to come in and I. Now you can, now you can hear the bus, sorry. Okay, that helps, thank you. Okay. <laughs> lucky Ready, Wata, up? lucky Wata, you will hear the bus. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, so okay. I'd like to invite uh, Wata, my co-moderator, to give us an okay. overview of Grammar for Tea. So go ahead, Wata. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Nagra, for introducing me. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Masahito Watanabe, speaking to you from Japan, and very happy to be here. This year, uh, we offer uh, Grammar for Tea, so, uh, or G4T for short, for the fifth year. We have worked together on facilitating the session and constantly improving and updating it. In our Grammar for TESO session, we invite participants to reflect on a few significant pedagogical uh, matters about English grammar. After establishing some important pedagogical knowledge, participants will get to apply this knowledge on some hands-on activities and tasks related mm -hmm. to lesson planning, uh, creating grammar uh, uh, forecast activities. Uh, participants are encouraged to complete several uh, weekly tasks that are required to complete one task to earn uh, the weekly batch. This is very important for their fruitful educational outcomes. Uh, collecting all five weekly badges will ultimately earn them their final EVO 24 certificate of participation. Our session is uh, very uh, interactive and we integrate a variety of online tools. We've been using Canvas free for teachers for several years now. This year we have added two new topics to G40 and these are UDL or uh, Universal Design for Learning and AI Generation uh, as we uh, together with uh, our part, our prospective participants aim to explore how and where these uh, fit within the grammar teaching and the learning content. So please, I'm looking forward to yet another rewarding experience with EVO. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Wata. <laughs> okay. Well, we now know what the buzzer sounds like. Okay. 
And uh, up next is Helena. Helena. Hello, everyone. You... I'm here. Wonderful to be here with you. And um, may I start by yes. saying how um, appreciative I am to be the lead moderator of our immersive workshops this year. This year, after a series of previous sessions on immersive storytelling in virtual worlds, immersive, immersive building, immersive learning experiences, which was in 2023, we're going to present you with immersive instructional design for language professionals uh, who want to learn to apply some of the principles of instructional design in the metaverse. Uh, we welcome every language um, per expert who experienced, who is experienced or not, perhaps, and you do not have to have full knowledge and skills in using this uh, particular area in the metaverse, but we're going to teach you, we're going to show you through simple tasks um, about the principles of immersive instructional design in spatial IO, frame VR, open sim, second life, and we're going to keep it as simple as possible for you. Um, so um, do not be put off by the technology. It's going to be as simple as possible. The first um, session every week, commencing on Thursday, the 18th of January, is going to be an orientation. And this is the case with all our first sessions, analyzing, designing, and developing. And then we're going to offer you opportunities for hands-on creativity. This is the takeaway of our session this year. Special IO is the focus of the second week, as I said before. And Engage VR is the third week, Second Life and Open Sim. Uh, we're focusing on in the fourth week and uh, evaluation for the end. Uh, thank you very much again, and you're most welcome to join us. Thank you very much, Helena. Okay, and the next session, Language Teacher Identity Agency in Teaching, is represented by um, Zhenji Wang and Yanan Zhao, um, neither one of whom could be here. One is sick, the other one has family um, issues. So I'm just going to read the summary of the session uh, in case you would like to join it. This is also a recurring session um, <clears throat> from last year and uh, was got very high ratings. Participants in the session will gain insights into identity agency and how it might influence their pedagogical instructions and decision-making in teaching. <clears throat> Through critical reflection on their professional identity construction and agentic actions within their specific context, participants will achieve a deeper understanding of their teaching. So <clears throat> if you could go to the um, session, to the call for participation, uh, you can click on the link uh, to the session if you'd like to join it and get the enrollment key. Um, I'm going to post the link uh, in the chat. And with that, I'll move on to the next one. So the next one is going to be represented by Miguel Carranza, Learning Engagement Through Virtual Apps. Thank you. Great pleasure to be back and to present an overview of our uh, session. For us, uh, engagement is a very important uh, topic and we believe that it's very uh, key in uh, helping students achieve uh, success and learn language learning. We also believe that the virtual apps are very useful uh, to achieve and to help students uh, improve uh, language better. Uh, our course is also hands-on designed for teachers to explore a variety of apps in order for them to create um, interactive online and face-to-face -face learning environments. During each week, participants will engage uh, with a variety of apps, apps such as Miro, Quizzes, Pear Deck, Warwall, Mentimeter, Canvas, Padlet, Woodlop, 
uh, WooClub, uh, Chat GPT, among others, will be explored. Um, the task participants will complete include readings. Uh, they will share their, their ideas. Uh, they will go on the uh, forums. They will post. And um, yeah, we expect a lot of congeniality and um, participation and interaction from the participants. A major uh, capstone project is an application uh, portfolio and which uh, participants will start building from week one. They will um, tell us what advantages and disadvantages they find for a given um, application. And uh, at the end of the, the session, at the end of the whole um, session, participants will share with other um, participants the, uh, the, the portfolio and they will get feedback from it. Once they finish uh, and complete all the tasks, they will get a certificate and the sessions uh, will start tomorrow. Uh, it will be 9 uh, a.m. Eastern time. Like I said, it's gonna be a practical approach and the idea is that for learners to start using their, uh, their apps in the classroom. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Miguel. And um, our next session is mentoring teacher research. Is Seven here? I have not seen her come in. Is there anybody else from the team here? I know Mariana, uh, you're here. What is Seven's oh, last Seden name? Seven is here. Seven is here. Okay, good. Yes, yeah. um, so okay. please go ahead, uh, Seven, and give us an overview of your session. Seren, can you speak? Um, Seren, I I can see that you're muted. There you go. Okay. Wait. Okay. I was on mute and I couldn't start my video. I'm so sorry for this. I, I, I've been here since the start of this meeting and I really want to uh, yeah. thank all the moderators for sustaining their efforts to, to make the, this um, EVO uh, 2024 a, a reality. I really appreciate. I mean, we all uh, appreciate your efforts. Uh, yeah, I'm the lead moderator of um, Mentoring Teacher Research, um, EVO sessions, and this year um, we will be together with our team, um, with our participants. So how did we start? We started um, uh, with, with our uh, aim to, to facilitate teacher research because it, we felt it was limited. Um, and um, so our session um, aims to strengthen our community, to support teacher research as teacher research mentors and provide them guidance to enable prospective mentors to support teacher research and through experiencing, uh, experiencing peer coaching, you know, let me say. Uh, if you are teacher educators, teacher development group leaders, uh, if you are... Um, um, mentoring teachers currently or student teachers to do research into their classroom uh, research, uh, you can join us. Uh, and we also expect decision makers or administrators or school leaders to be with us. And what else? Um, we aim to build a, a worldwide community of TCR research mentors and develop participants' knowledge and skills. And this year we have added uh, enhancement mentoring uh, to, to our agenda and which is based on, um, yeah, please join us if you want to hear more from us. Uh, I, I realized that two minutes flight. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you very much, Seven. Okay, and next up is Nelly again.
with mindfulness awareness practice. Yes, um, thank you. Thank you, Christine. And um, we won't be hearing buzzers uh, in this session, but you'll be hearing uh, very, very relaxing music. Uh, Sanya is not here today, um, but congratulations to her on the wedding of her son. She will be co-moderating with me. This is our third year and um, second year with Sanya as the moderator. She started as a uh, participant. What we do is, first of all, uh, we care for ourselves. We learn how to um, listen to our inner voice and how to become more in tune to ourselves and our surroundings. We also um, learn, and I say we because we learn together, how to um, help our students connect and be better listeners, which is so important in language learning. So uh, students um, will benefit from any teacher who takes mindfulness awareness practice. The idea is to become aware. And that's what um, the session is about. Everything is hands-on. And it's a lot of fun because, well, you'll see why when you join. And I hope you all join. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nellie. You beat the buzzer. Yeah, I didn't want to hear it. <laughs> so even though I created it, right? <laughs> okay. So we can move on to the next slide. And Nellie will talk about Moodle for Teachers. And another congratulations. Thank you, Christine. Another congratulations to Zainab uh, from Iran, who's been um, co-moderating the session with me. She was originally a participant. And a congratulations, she's not here today. She got married yesterday. And um, and I'm sure she'll be watching the recording. So uh, your comments are very, very welcome. And congratulations, Zainab, from all of us here today. Uh, the session changes every year. And so does Moodle, because basically what you learn is to create your very own online course and everything that Moodle has to offer. And if you don't want to, at the end of the course, if you don't want to um, use Moodle and you'd like to use Canvas, you can migrate the whole course that you created during the uh, four weeks. Uh, you'll have a chance to migrate it to Canvas and use it there. The idea is to uh, learn about Moodle, use Moodle, and enjoy Moodle as much as I have um, for the past 31 years. Yeah, you heard it. It's been a long time. Or did I say 21 years? Sorry, 21 years, not 30. Thank you for watching. Okay. Thank no you, buzzer. Really. <laughs> no buzzer. Okay. <laughs> and we can move on to the next one. And... Uh, Teacher Research for Professional Development is represented by Ruben and Marianas, who are both here. So please go ahead. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, good to see all of you here. Um, this is our uh, workshop, five-week workshop, which aims at empowering teachers to improve uh, their practices, their teaching practices, by implementing exploratory action research in their classrooms. Um, by the end of our workshop, uh, teachers will have understood research as a way of professional development, will have developed autonomy and agency, yes, um, to engage in research and will have, um, they will have uh, implemented a small scale research project in their classrooms, will have reflected on the results of their projects and will have um, had time to uh, apply those results to their uh, future teaching experiences. Of course, um, they will be able as well 
to uh, share their findings with other participants inside our EVO community and beyond. <clears throat> we are not alone um, because I said we, because at the very beginning uh, you mentioned Ruben. Uh, Ruben Massey uh, is my partner. Uh, I am Mariana Serra. Both of us are from Argentina, but as I said uh, a minute ago, we are not alone because uh, eight experienced moderators uh, will be accompanying us. Yes, they are from Cyprus, Argentina, Ecuador, India, Uzbekistan. Thank you. Thank you, Mariana. Okay, and... Nelly is up again with teaching EFL to young learners. Thank you, Christine. I believe that Cheryl is here. So Cheryl, you can uh, unmute yourself and join me. This is our eighth year with um, Electronic Village Online and teaching EFL to young learners. Every year, uh, the course changes as all courses or sessions as they're called change because technology changes. And the idea of course is to empower our learners and engage them with technology, including AI, even in uh, teaching AFL to young learners, we've also added AI so that uh, you can benefit from that. Um, you'll also be learning about games, digital games, board games, and how you can use them with your students and how you can develop them because that's the, the idea. And this is where Cheryl's expertise comes in. Uh, Cheryl, would you like to talk about your session in week two? Yes, um, I Hi. teach something. I, I talk to teachers about how they can use context in the classroom to develop what language changes might happen. And I've been watching a whole bunch of K-dramas and stuff. To say, oh, is that why they say that? You know, so I can get a little bit of hint. But it involves things like... Um, taking things that you can do. I like to use things like with weather, things like that, to uh, explain to people how it relates to what they're learning. And every year I try to add to it. This year I'm adding things that I'm trying to find upcycling things from different countries and uh, like for shiki or things like that. And Nevis and, and uh, Nelly and I both are really looking forward to Nelly teaching reading this year, the reading session, right? Storytelling, specifically storytelling. Story Thank you very much and come, come join us. Thank you so much, Cheryl and Nelly. And Sudarshana is here to represent and talk about technology for spoken English. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, here I am uh, Sudarshana Shirude from India. Dr. Nelly and uh, Sudhakar are my co-moderators and uh, we are uh, having the session Technology for Spoken English that is a T4AC. Our session is uh, for teachers and teacher educators who are teaching English uh, as a second or third language in their context. This session includes various uh, technology tools and apps uh, which are very easy on Android uh, as well as uh, iPhones also. And these tools uh, enhances and improves uh, speaking English and also provide various practice sessions also. Uh, this is our fourth uh, consecutive year uh, with this session. And last year, uh, we are very happy with our session. Uh, every year we have uh, uh, various inclusions and uh, upgradations in our session. So uh, with our team, we invite all participants to join our session and enjoy the learning. So uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Wow. Okay. You also beat the buzzer. <laughs> Sushana, thank you very much. Okay. And um, yeah, a couple more. There is uh, Nelly with Maria on tools for student collaboration. Not sure. Um, yeah, I haven't you seen start Maria. The buzz. I'm not sure if Maria is here, um, but Maria has been co-moderating with me for about 
three years now. She also started as a participant. I think that's what's wonderful. You start as a participant and then you volunteer because we're all volunteers. I don't know if that was clear to everyone. Uh, you volunteer to also co-moderate. Uh, Tools for Student Collaboration changes every year. And this year, if you join, I see some uh, people who've returned uh, to the session. It'll be completely different uh, with other tools that we'll be using in order to uh, engage our students, because that's what students love the most. They love to be able to, did that? <laughs> they love to be able to work together and, and, and do something uh, with the uh, activities that they do. And that's what uh, the session is about. The session is about um, learning how to, I think, I think you jumped or is it my imagination? Something happened. <laughs> they're both my sessions, but they're, they're not the same. Uh, Tools for Student Elaboration is exactly that. It's um, learning about tools for student collaboration and practicing these tools as teachers, that's what you'll be doing. Uh, the session is hands-on and, and I hope you enjoy yourself. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Nellie. Um, so uh, you do have several sessions going. <laughs> so, um, yeah. And this is um, another one that uh, you're leading. Yeah, this is the last this, one, I believe, on the list. This is the last one, yes. Yeah. So, yes. so uh, yeah, it's video-based mobile learning. I think um, Surashana mentioned that with the technology for spoken English, where we also use a lot of uh, tools um, that are on your smartphone. And I think that's what students love, at least my students uh, of all ages, whether uh, young learners or adult learners, uh, young learners love to use their phones. I mean, they, they have their phones accessible with them all the time, so why not? And I've been doing this uh, for uh, a number of years, and that is using the smartphones in the classroom. And you'll be learning about different ways to uh, engage your students and also teach your students how to engage. And they'll be teaching you different ways. What students love, as you know, with um, TikTok and Instagram and threads and so on, is to create videos of themselves. So why not use whatever they love in a way that they can also learn, you know, as a learning tool. And that's what it's about, learning how to use your smartphone and create videos. You'll be learning it and your students will be learning it. But don't worry, you'll be able to also use your desktop. So you won't have to only use your phone, but your students will because that's all they're going to want to use. They prefer their phone to their computer. So thank you and looking forward to seeing you at this session. Thank you very much, Nelly. And thank you to all of the moderators and co-moderators for the wonderful sessions that you have prepared. And yes, you said something very important, Nellie. Uh, we are all volunteers in EVO. Uh, and I saw a message in the chat um, that we're all enthusiasts. And yes, that is probably the best way to describe us because um, you know your participation in our sessions, your discussions, your engagement, uh, those are the rewards that we get uh, that keep us going, that sustain uh, this volunteer effort uh, for a whole year. And then we have the sessions and uh, we get a new wind. Um, we also get some new wind from proposals. So, here is where I'm going to make a plug for you to join the EVO communities. And there are various places where you can join us. One of them is the YouTube channel uh, where this particular session is being streamed live and all other recordings will be there um, of previous sessions that we've had. You, all the, not all the previous years of EVO, but quite a few previous years you can find there um, on the YouTube playlists. So please go there and see what's available. So if you've missed a session, uh, you know, there is some information on the sessions. I also saw that um, it's a pity that we're only running EVO sessions once a year 
and not several times a year, well, that's um, something for us to discuss. Um, but it takes a lot of time. So it does take a whole year uh, to get through the proposals and the vetting and the training of new moderators. And in the future, we will also have uh, continuing moderators join us in the moderator training. So uh, it is a very important, um, how shall I put it, uh, effort to get everyone involved throughout the year. And here is the place where you could think about joining us for a proposal. If you go into the EVO community um, in groups IO, that's number three, you will receive notifications of our call for proposals. So start thinking about putting together a proposal with fellow um, English teachers that are interested in the same thing you are and um, make a proposal. We will train you if the proposal is accepted. We will train you then in delivering uh, an online session like the ones that um, are coming up. We also are represented on Facebook and the link is right here, as well as on X, which is uh, the former Twitter. Um, so please, please join us uh, in order to get the notifications on EVO. Okay, and next. Sorry, Christine, well, I Mariana see... had her hand up. Yeah, go ahead. Oh. <laughs> Uh, yes, thank you very much. Um, Christine, uh, can we uh, clarify uh, something about our session with Ruben, please, for uh, just a few seconds? Yeah, thank go ahead, you. Miranda. Thank you, Christine. Uh, over to you, Ruben. Ruben, are you there? Yes, yes, I'm here. Okay. Sorry, Mariana, I I didn't get what you say. What what do you mean? I the clarification. Um, yes. Uh, the, yes. Uh, it's okay. Um, about the fact that some teachers are on holidays and about designing their uh, research projects. Ah, okay. Yes, yes, because the, we we invite teachers who are teaching at different levels for our session. But maybe some teachers are on holidays uh, now, nowadays, yes, in these months. Um, so we invite teachers anyway to join in the session and uh, prepare a proposal of their research and exploration for, fu for future implementation when they start teaching. Yes. Uh, sorry, Mariana, I, I didn't know you were referring to that exactly. Yes. So thank you, Christina, and all the, okay. the team. Of thank course. you very much, Ruben and Christine. Yeah, thank you. Um, that is a good question to answer up front. <laughs> okay, uh, so moving on to the next slide. Cheryl, Cheryl had something to say. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, Cheryl. Very shortly. Um, some people may not realize that when they have their picture come on, and if it, you know, where it says like connecting to audio or connecting video, if that's giving you a little crazy asterisk thing going like this, you might want to turn your video off so you can get your audio going. And what that does is it drags from everybody. Like I live out in the country and my video, my uh, internet's good, but when we have a bunch of people having troubles, then my video goes bad because it sucks all the, it's not big, you know, my, it's not small, but it's not like huge capacity of a college. So just a hint that people taught me earlier that if 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 things are going wacko, you'll you'll see a little ellipse on your next to your picture, and you can get rid of the video, add the audio. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it saves bandwidth. So thank you, Cheryl. That is important. Okay. Um, and I just saw a note come in that um, um, I think it was Elizabeth that mentioned that she posted a note about uh, the H5Ps in Moodle. And uh, that's how the idea for the set for this new session got started. And that is a great idea. So um, 
new moderators come online all the time and they come from past participants. So if you are a, a, a participant and really interested, enthusiastic about what you're doing or something that you have learned, then please put together a, a proposal. We'd be happy to see it. Okay. Yeah, there was a question about the stream too. I put the link in the chat. Um, if anyone wants that, we'll be uh, editing it so that uh, you can listen to it tomorrow. Okay. Thank you, Nelly. Uh, and there, there were some questions in the that. chat. And uh, most could of, we uh, wait for just a uh, second, uh, okay. Doris? Then uh, we will open it up to all questions. Okay, so here is uh, the last content slide. Um, at the end of our five-week sessions, we will have a closing ceremony, and uh, we need to put that date on the next uh, calendar for EVO uh, so that it's there for all to remember. Um, on This is a Sunday. On February 18th, Sunday, February 18th, we will have a closing ceremony, and you're all invited. At that point, uh, we will hear some results of what happened in your sessions. And those are usually really exciting uh, to hear about. And instructions have already been sent to the lead moderators. So lead moderators, if you haven't done so yet, please share them with your co-moderators. Um, We'll try to keep that to uh, an hour and a half, um, and it should be doable. Um, and there are instructions for how you can have participants join in and uh, maybe one or two slides from uh, the results of your sessions. So everyone here is invited to join us for that closing ceremony. Okay, and then I think the next slide is Q&A. So, who had a question, Doris? The most common question was like, is it the courses are self-paced and if they were free? Uh huh. Yes, the courses are free and this is something that distinguishes us from uh, TESOL courses. TESOL courses, as you know, are uh, require payment. Our sessions are free and have been free for uh, 23 years and will continue to be free. So this is something we are very proud of and uh, this is why it's a volunteer effort. None of us are paid a single penny for this. In fact, you know, we do have some outlays, some of us have outlays, but uh, the courses are free. Now, as for the self-paced, uh, I would say no. They are not really self-paced in the sense that you can do the tasks whenever you want. They are geared toward a due date at the end of each week. Um, and so tasks are expected to, to be completed, especially in the courses where there are badges uh, or those that have prerequisites where one week is a prerequisite for the next week. Uh, it is important that you pace yourself during the week in such a way that you can complete the tasks by the due date. So yes, they are self-paced within each week. Um, you do the tasks whenever you can. Um, typically there is a live uh, session uh, for each of the sessions where you get some more instructions. So you need to find out when those live meetings are. Um, typically on Sundays, probably, uh, maybe on Saturdays, that depends on, on the session. But other than that, um, you need to pace yourself throughout the week to make sure you meet the, the due dates. Any other questions, Doris? Mm, I would like to invite all of you to invite your, your students. One participant, one uh, someone in, in the chat uh, pointed out that she was going to invite her linguistic students and they say, that's great. So everybody, mm -hmm. please, yes. uh, yeah. that will be fun. It is a yes. fun project for classes too. You that's know. right. And I used to do exactly that with my graduate students. 
um, they could do this, you know, of course we had our own projects for the course, but um, there was always an extra credit opportunity and EVO was one of those. And um, uh, I had some really good results from uh, my own graduate students joining our session. So I hope your students do that. Jiman is asking for certification. Certificates uh, will they be? Will it be uh, for each course? They he ask or she? Sorry. Yes, uh, each course uh, can issue a certificate. We've got an EVO certificate template, uh, and the course title will be added there as well as the um, um, no, not the moderators just the EVO coordination team, but the title of the course will be there. And of course, the participant's name. Um, ask your uh, session lead moderator to show you a certificate. Um, we have those ready. Um, I should have had one here, but uh, didn't think of doing that. So it's just a, a template, but and it's issued by uh, the Electronic Village Online. Uh, Joanna uh, Silinska is asking if we will receive all the info by mail. By mail? Yes. Uh, uh, okay, that would mean snail mail, like letters? No. No, I think, uh -huh. Christine, I think what you mean. By means, email. By, oh, by email. email. If, if we no. will send everything about everything in one email, and that, that's right. not what we do that is by answer I think yeah but it's only no, by so, courses um you should become familiar with the term learning management system and if somebody uh could please put in the link to our uh sessions again to the call for participation to the sessions each session has a <clears throat> join piece of join information um so if you're interested in a particular session, click on the link to it. The link is the title. And you will then find the join information, which allows you to register for the course and enroll in a learning management system. And the learning management system uh, will be either Moodle or Canvas free for teachers. Both of them are completely free but they're learning management systems. Uh, and that means everything, the whole course, the content of the course and the communication and assessment, everything is under one roof in this LMS, in this learning management system. So uh, there is an email option to communicate with the participants and, and with the moderators, but Typically, email is not the way it's done anymore, but it is uh, the communication, the interaction takes place in discussion forums, and that is what they are called. So um, you're, you engage with the participants and the moderators in a discussion forum, which also gives me the opportunity to remind all of you, um, and most of the sessions have already uh, started with some introductions, um, and questions and answers. When you post something, uh, you will get an answer. You should expect an answer from the moderators. Uh, you need to go in and check. So please check daily, um, at least once every, every day, uh, better even uh, two or three times daily, what responses have come in to your own post or to your own questions and answers. So I, I, I hope that this is clear how we proceed. Well, just like a lot of LMSs, I'm not sure, I don't wanna spout out all, but you have a chance in each one of those discussion sessions to sign up for your frequency of receiving information that you have something in that discussion that you are interested in. And that's how you can keep track of it. Correct. And that really does help a lot. Mm -hmm. It does, Cheryl. Thank you. And one of the first things that we have in our own uh, delivering uh, best practices uh, session, a DBP session, is um, about notifications, how to set your notifications. 
uh, for receiving that kind of communication you were talking about, Cheryl. And it comes from Canvas, and I'm sure it comes from Moodle the same way. Moodle. You sign up for how often you want it and the way you want it. You can get it via email, uh, and that is that is what I do. And it can you know, be I in get, a digest, too. You know, it could you be can in a get digest. email digest. You can get full-blown. You, you, that may be what they're asking about. I don't know. But. No, I think what she meant was, uh, Christine and Cheryl, I think what she meant was, in general, if, if EVO24 will send out a general, yeah. uh, you know, message about various things, then that's impossible because we're talking about... Right, 16, right, yeah. and that is that is why it's important, uh, Larissa. If you could move back one slide, or Rose, please move back one slide, uh, two slides. Sorry, to the uh, EVO communities. Mm. Thank you, Rose. Uh, right. This is where uh, you should sign up. It's number three. If you sign up uh, for the EVO community, IO groups or groups IO, sorry, is actually. Um, more or less an email based community. And this is where we will send out email based um, posts, re announcements about uh, the call for proposals and the next round of EVO sessions. Um, yeah, I think those are, oh, there is one more coming up. Um, and that will be discussed more in the closing ceremony that is best of EVO in the middle of March. Um, March 16th, I think is when it is. Um, so we will be sending out notifications then. And this is where um, the moderators, again, sh showcase their own sessions. So best of EVO, but there is a little bit more time. There's usually half an hour given uh, for each session. Uh, so that notification will also go out through the EVO community. Our Facebook page, uh, Nelly typically is very good at keeping that up to date. So all the latest information will be there as well. I personally have not used X for reasons uh, that have to do with all the, um, <laughs> the drama around it. Um, I, I'm not, I haven't been using it, so I don't know if you guys but are. Christine, I think that they can ask if, if they want to ask questions, if there are any problems or issues, or if you need help of any kind. I think Facebook mm -hmm. is your best uh, place. True. Unless you're using some of the other channels. The EVO community, that, that's yes. also a good place. But yeah, keep asking. Mm -hmm. You know, don't feel like there's no one there because right. we are, and we're quite a we few. We are quite there. Few of us. We're yes, we are there re year round, and we do watch our emails. Uh, you know, sometimes I get emails to my personal email, uh, which you find uh, every co moderator's email is on the um, uh, website where the sessions are indicated. And um, you have the coordination team there and we have our emails there. So you can definitely reach us, but yes, Facebook is probably uh, the best way to get it all at one in one place. Okay, any other questions? Um, there was, a, let me find it again, because I'm here and there. <laughs> Someone from Colombia was asking about um, the possibility of her students having uh, doing the courses and then using that certification as a way to for her to give them a grade. And I think it's a great idea. You know, um, it becomes part of their assessment. Yes. That is totally up to you how you want to use that participate someone's participation in an EVO session if you want to use that for a grade if you uh yeah if it's just uh, extra credit as as it was in my case or uh, a project you know where they have different choices and they have to do one of them yeah that's totally up to you how you want to handle that that was Nancy Carvajal <laughs> she won her so students you can to ask 
Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Doris. I thought Doris. I thought yes. you were finished. Again, to sorry. clarify that she wants her students to enroll and then present the certificate for class credit. Okay, the certificate that they get mm -hmm. from EBO. That's yes, can do. we because cannot. Remember, EBO cannot give any credit of any kind. Uh, but if you decide uh, as a teacher to give a grade or credit to your students for participating in an EVO session. That is totally your prerogative. And this is a really good time for me to announce everything. I do this every year and it's some welcome, some don't. Anyway, in Kansas and in many of the American uh, United States schools now, back in the eighties, they decided that, you know, the teachers were like, why are we going to these workshops for nothing, you know? And that was mainly for things that we would physically go to because there was no real internet. And so they developed a professional development teaming thing where each school has their own plan for what they expect to happen in their school. And then you could apply and say, hey, I read book Dr. Bruner's book on context and language, okay? Or uh, Elizabeth Weig's book on some of that. So anyway, there were rules. And there are still rules and they're difficult, but you take what you learned in something that you got credit for, but like a certificate credit, not college credit. And then you write up what you did. I always include videos and links. It's, it's, it's not easy, but I like to do that because it's for me less expensive. And so you, I would, I would be more than willing to talk to people about how to do that if they have a situation where they, where they can actually do that. Because I get actually fifty points for participation in the class, and then I turn it in to the professional development council, and then they say, okay, this looks good, or if something's not quite kosher, then they'll tend to send it back to me and say this needs to be worked on. But that is something that is available to <laughs> in other schools too. I think in in the EU even I I don't know for sure, but I've I've talked to my friends, all of you, and some of you have those opportunities. So the teacher could use that kind of a thing to give credit or similar. Yes. Okay. One, okay, last, one last question here is: How can we return the favor? Is there a website to contribute or uh, share? Uh, research papers. This is Dr. Lamia Ramadan. Oh, hmm. that's an interesting question. Um, share papers. Um, well, that sounds like a question for the teacher research session. Um, and if there are some papers to be shared or some research to be shared or other outcomes, First of all, I would suggest that uh, you present this at the closing ceremony, uh, just that these results have come in, and then maybe find a place where, uh, like a live binder or some other notebook form uh, where they could be shared. Yes, that is definitely something that can be done. Um, you can also upload things and share things in the files within your learning management system, but then it won't be shared with others outside the learning management system. So um, if you have a question of how you would like to, sh how you could share that, uh, just raise it uh, with us and we'll come up with an answer. It's definitely a good idea. Christine, I uh, added the certificate. I, I think it's a good time to show it. We have three minutes ah, left. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so do you have it in the slideshow? Yeah. Thank you, Larissa. There it is. Okay. So this is uh, just the template uh, which to which we will add your name, the participant's name, and the title of the session that you participated in. Okay? Thank you very much, Larissa. And it will be uh, sent out in electronic form.
Okay. Any other questions? Uh, there is a question oh, by Elizabeth. Yes. I think that's mm -hmm. really important. Yeah, Christine, uh -huh. if you could address that. Okay, what is the question? Let me check. Is uh, Can you change the certificate? It says, it says participation, change it to certificate of completion rather than Yes, we can do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll do that. Yeah, thank you. Can the certificates be shared or displayed through LinkedIn? Um, you mean the template? Uh, this is Pablo's question. Uh, can we send them through LinkedIn? Uh, that's probably possible, but typically we send them out via email to each uh, person that is requesting one. I think then later Unless on, it's... if you want to display it there, then you can upload you it can and do that. Yes. Yes, sure. If you got a certificate, a certificate from EVO, you can definitely display it there. Absolutely. Okay. Have we answered all the questions? You can send that yeah. out too. Like I include that in my package that I send in to the state department of education. I, I include mm -hmm. those certificates in there. Sure. You can raise your hand yeah. if you want to open your mic and ask your question if you have one or a comment. Yes. And then uh, we have one more very important thing to do and that is take a picture of all of us. And uh, so at this point, please also open your uh, webcams, turn yes. them on. Show okay. your faces, smile. <laughs> yes, and definitely smile. Larissa is going to take our picture. So when you're ready, Larissa, let us know. So we'll all smile. <laughs> yes, and we go. I have a good expression for getting people. Doris, uh, can you German. take the yes. now? Yes. And I'll take uh, from here. Could you take okay. it? I can take it. All right, let's yep. see. Oh, no. I, several I don't know screens. where that came from. I, I really don't. <laughs> I just did this and then it came up. <laughs> Anybody's birthday today? Uh, no. Mine is coming up. Okay, so there we go. Two days. On Monday. Okay, happy birthday. Thank happy you. Happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you. But where did the balloons come from? I don't know where they came from. I want okay, them again. We have one page that with cameras, but the second page is there are no cameras there. Why do I you only need two see pages? names? Turn on your cameras. So I see only one page. We got page. four. We got Laura, four pages. Natalia I see one. Eduardo, turn on I'll your cameras, I'll do one. Please. Come on, I'll take everybody. A photo. Turn on your cameras. Wake up. <laughs> Are you there? Okay, noise. We Let's make some Zuleika. noise. Let's make some noise. Turn on wake your up, camera. wake up. I can't open my camera. It says uh, it's. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, yeah. Hold the people can't. They're not there. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, wait oh. a minute. Nelly's going to allow Emily. Hold on. We need to get permission here. We need permission, oh, yes. Really? Star videos. There we go. <laughs> there now we, we have go. Oh, Yay. Right. Good. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let's we'll see. On now page. we have second page. Cool. Okay. So, again, <laughs> smile for the camera. <laughs> okay. All right. Let me get a second page. Yes. Okay. Say cheese again. Cheese. Where are the <laughs> balloons? Where are they? How do you get the balloons there? <laughs> Third page. Okay. We need cameras. There we go. Hmm. Okay. Well, okay. We so page. I bought for two. So I will uh, share with uh, Doris. Doris, thanks just for <laughs> taking. Okay. I do not see the cameras on page three. So Grazia, I do not. I only see have two cameras. pages. So I took oh. two. Yeah. Okay. Depends on your screen. Two, two pages. So you got it. <laughs> okay. I have four pages. Okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's because you're the birthday girl. <laughs> I want balloons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so how did you get the balloons? I don't know. I Somebody else got it too. How did you get the balloons? Yes, I saw them. I have oh. no idea. 
something in the reactions. Okay. Yeah. Lee? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, this was very good. It was great to see everyone here. Like and uh, so as it says on the last slide, let the fun begin. This is really the highlight of our year. So uh, please join us, engage yourselves, have fun, and learn a lot. We'll hear what you learn. Invite, invite your invite colleagues, you. invite yes, your friends, invite your right. students, your friends, okay, your colleagues, so your students. Everybody's welcome. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you very much thanks. for I'm being glad to here. See everybody. Have a great day. Great Besitos, evening. Besitos, everyone. And a, and a good five weeks. Bye.